My any Professor Lord Mens and Ninkomo were a senior lecturer at the University of Ghana. Na YNG, a year at Nanosem Kakra, a far a year retreat na on my penny and in a swap for Mokoyano. Considering sir, a committee had been formed some time back to look into matters of the performance of the city. Na a Kobia Siano had to take a, a retreat to resolve the same issues that this committee was supposed to have resolved. You know. Prof, good morning. Good morning, sir. And it's your phone, young man. Now, I'm not paying in Bumdi, sir. Yeah, 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 I don't believe you have a call. Open in Osha Ghanaian economy, and now, how would you describe it? Well, um, I think an, an economy that um, is receiving a shock from the global, you know, market. Because um, OSHA economy now, and the economy also, mm. the economy is dependent on other economies. And at the issue of every law, what do you mean? I think that's our control also. And until now, the whole project is Ghanaian economy. You don't just I mean, get up and say that uh, Ghana has money or Ghana has resources. Um, we may have our own resources, as long as the dynamics of whatever the resources the resource is supposed to do for us, no, is determined by other people. Let's take, for instance, um, it's a uh, who exports oil. Now, if there is a global market, no, oil, no, our supply was low, and my price is for more. There's nowhere at which we are generating the necessary revenue now, and at the same time, you know. The way your next importer of oil, that's the oil price, the uh, cost it, it, it affects your economy. The oil export is uh, cocoa. Now, the bureau, I'm not going to go to chocolate. I'm not going to go to the chocolate club. I'm not going to go to chocolate club. I'm not going to go to the chocolate club. You know, um, when you are projecting the Ghanaian economy, you don't. You know, look at the economy in isolation. Sir, um, a normal bit to me, I say, a normal bit to me, I say. And for now, I think uh, we are suffering from those, you know, global pressures. And at the same time, overestimation of the economy by the current administration. Clearly, I mean, as in opposition, you know, for which you don't have much information. Let me put it that way. You don't have much information, you know. Um, your understanding of the economy is limited because Ghana, Accra, Romania, they are doing a research and have a predictor. They are using Breno. And they have information about the power of our mouth. If you are basing on the third party information to make projections into our economy, you really have to be careful because your DPR, um, I know you're doing Accra. And so, um, Accra economy, I hope so. Whatever explanation that will be given, you know, I don't think it's a fine to them because of the way I'm out for hope. It's the hopes that it's the real, it's the cost of the heat of um, last election. Oh, it is, I mean, the American economy is there. Uh, Ghanaian economy, you know, is going through uh, um, a, a dynamic uh, way. I said, you know, at this time, the most of the things that are happening, we don't have control over them. The only way we can we can we can I uh, mean come out with this is how to manage it because uh, we can only measure an economic manager uh, economic manager's performance based on how he is able to steer the economy through you know uh, extreme economic situations. And, you know, it's a true test for the administration as we speak now. Mm. And then also, Gobi, at the time that. We were looking at uh, the economy to be in good shape, you know. Truly, the economy was not in good shape. Mm. There are some indicators that we may have to look at, which precedes the GDP that we measure, which precedes the inflation, which precedes the interest rate that we rely on as an indicator for our economic impact. Now, before the COVID, we saw interest rate, monetary policy rate coming down to the extent of treasury bills also coming down. But I mean, 
me and you, as we sit here at a time, where we're able to walk straight to the bank and then comfortably to the bank and then go for a loan at a cheaper cost. We were not. Mm. Businesses were not comfortably able to walk to the bank to go for a loan at a cheaper cost, possibly to expand and then empty people. They were not. So, I mean, one of the gates that you can see that people are really having confidence in the economy is how to invest in long-term assets. If you take our stock market, for instance, mm. the entire stock market is owned by foreigners, which tells you that the Ghanaians themselves you know, don't even have that much of confidence in that equity market. So, I mean, if you, if you typically look at the rate at which people even buy cement, it's supposed to serve as a signal for you that the economy is about to grow or the economy is about to expand because people have developed confidence and therefore they are building into, they are putting up their funds into long-term investment. Mm. You get it. So these are all indicators or sentimental gauge that is used to have an economy that is growing. In America, they don't wait for GDP. They don't wait for inflation. If I give my wife chalk money and she goes to the market and earlier on she was able to buy five tomatoes at a particular price, the next week I give her money and she tells me that she was, only to buy, she was able to buy only two of that, it should tell me that I mean, inflation is going up. Mm. So effectively, these are all early gauges that we can have to make sure that we use that to determine the economy. But we've seen that. The inflation was down, but prices on the market were up. People were feeling it every now and then. Our wives were complaining. Which tells you that the economic numbers that were being shown were not trickling down to the people. So you can't tell me inflation is coming down when people go to the market and they still have things, uh, uh, prices increasing every now and then. Mm. Those, are, those are the things that, you know, we should look at and when it comes to this economy. All right. Now, uh, Omar could retreat now, but we almost say we will be briefed as to the release we are likely to receive from government after their consultative uh, uh, discussions on what we are doing. So, we are at the course of meeting with CBR. What would have been the three key areas you'd advise government to look at? That is to, to, to ensure that they bring reliefs. And what would be the areas that like government must not attempt to touch? Yeah, fantastic. You see, Sammy, when you, uh, if I find myself to be in that meeting, I have a say, the economy as we sit here, you know, we cannot internally recycle. The only thing that can save this economy is to have an external inflow, an external discipline. The external inflow and external discipline, I'm calling for the pitch is because so, I mean, for so many instances, we mm. have, you know, given the signal that without external pressures, we cannot manage the economy on our own. Mm. The reason I'm saying this is that, don't you have your friend is in Ghana, you didn't feel 65 years. 65 years after independence, you acquired a best 16 times. We divided 65 by 16 now. I chose her. Almost every four years, be an economy is saying you have a crime. Mm. IMF comes and then they give us a peanut and then they instill discipline in us financially. When you go mm. to IMF, it says the signal that financially you cannot manage yourself and therefore you need a rescue. And that is why you go for IMF and IMF will, will give you that one billion, one billion, just below one billion, mm. and then tell you that. Do A, B, C, D. Now, all the things I would tell this government, when IMF comes, is exactly what they would tell the government. Mm -hmm. When IMF comes, they will tell you to reduce your number of ministers. Okay. When IMF comes, they will tell you to, you know, cut down certain key expenditures. When IMF comes, they're going to tell you that remove some social interventions that you, you can allow the people to, you know, handle themselves. Mm. When IMF comes, they will tell you that 
don't allow politics to you know overshadow your decisions to you know um i mean implement policies the so policies that you it cannot be economically viable you don't go for it mm -hmm. so basically that is what IMF will tell us. So all of the recommendations that if I were to be in this meeting, IMF will come and then they will tell us. So I will advise that we go to IMF. We go to IMF, seek its external inflow. Apart from that, with the presence of IMF, investor confidence will be renewed because they know that with IMF on, the, on our necks, we're going to be disciplined financially. If they tell you to keep your budget deficit at 5%, you must do that within the time that IMF is here. So the investor will be confident within the time that IMF is here. Now oh. let's go back into history. Okay. You realize you realize that come on, your IMF. Now you have free I will say be free IMF. We are doing budget deficit almost close to the five percent that IMF mm. knows that. A ideal budget deficit which will control our borrowing and all those. The year that we went off IMF, we did a budget deficit of about seven percent. Sorry, eleven percent of our GDP, mm. which calls for a whole lot of borrowing and all those. So, I mean, we need external pressure to manage this economy. Yadi and Komachu Chene, AC Hanum, say no. I am reading this morning, sir, government intends to pump some $2 billion to rescue the city. Is that the path to go? Uh, come again. Government wants to pump in $2 billion. $2 billion to rescue the city. For me, you see, I've been saying this every now and then, Sami. That pumping of dollar, pumping of uh, holding the dollar for some time, uh, limiting access to the dollar by some people on the market, and all those, so they are all short-term measures to keep the city. But Sami, structurally, structurally, the city can never be controlled until we change some of the things until we implement most of the promises in our manifestos. Mm. The reason why I'm saying this is that if I plot the city, I'm a quantitative person, I'm a mathematician. If I plot the city, I see ups and downs, you know, in the short term. But then in the long term, I see an upward direction. The reason why long term you have upward direction is that the economy is still structured in such a way that we have to feed more on imports. Our export is balancing with our import, but then the import part is very, very sensitive to global dynamics. Mm. And until we go into our import portfolio and then pick out, you know, products that we can easily manufacture in Ghana to reduce our import in that area, those areas, no, there's no way we can control the city. Mm. What the Bank of Ghana is coming to do will control the city in short term. Now let's go back. When you take, for instance, the city as of four years ago, you realize that it would have been around, let's say, four Ghana cities per dollar. Mm. When you, um, you move the year forward, you will see that it is five Ghana cities per dollar. Within the year, you will see some wiggles, which I've got five, you know, so now five point one, now about five point zero eight. Now, who's that? Now, one of the years are control measures, now Bank of Ghana, this year, no. But structurally, no. The longer term trend, no, I oppose direction. The oppose direction not tell you, you say, we need a structural change in our economy to change that direction of the city. So to me, what they are coming to do, fine. It will take us for some time, but it won't control it. A situation where government himself is in need of dollars. Let me tell you, I mean, what brings in dollar into this country? You're normal, yes, sir. You're exporting you. And a government, a copper bishia, and a cocoa syndicator, which is also a form part of uh, export, also. and a man for remittance, Kakromo Yabano, and a little dollar bear, my mother. Yamamu mm. Ghana has a Ghana yen chak dollar. It is a buying essay, some you own your dollar shop. Because, who's there? The LTM RC, you know, I have free for all the secrets, is there? The bigger economic agent to use the dollar, no, at this time, we hear dollar no power. Because I'm buying to me in the Euro bond market. It's a bond to me in the bond market, and part of the man. There's one billion or two billion dollars to be occupied by the man. Now, so I'm trying to have a company two billion dollars to from in house. And I said, our international reserves are. Um, it, it's a big blow for us. 
because we always need that uh, those uh, external influence to make sure that your team is sitting. But uh, to me, and yet, uh, you see, you see, it's more or less a recycle. Oh, and okay. I mean, it won't solve the problem. It's only short term measure. But that's an appeal, Prof. So, Jim and Annie Medin, come on. Professor Lord Mensah, senior uh, research fellow at the University of Ghana Business School, you know, AD and come on.